What's up everyone? So today I did a presentation over on Polymakers Discord talking about Hue Forge and how to slice your first Hue Forge. This is primarily a video for beginners that haven't done Hue Forge in the past, but there are some good tips and tricks for the people that have been doing it for a while. So I hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you and answer them as quickly as possible. Like, subscribe, share with your friends that are also struggling with Hue Forge, and I hope you learned something. Okay, so last week we talked about standard mode in my last tutorial. Um, we talked about how to make your first Hue Forge, the beginner series, um, what the filament library looks like, what these sliders and all the options for the sliders are, what the color core is, some of the modes, etc. Today I want to talk about what you need to know to slice your own Hue Forge file. Once you've created the mesh in HueForge and export it to Bamboo Studio, uh, Prusa Slicer, Orca, whatever the case may be, um, and then show you a little bit, show you some slicer settings that you're going to need to know that will help you speed the process up because these can take quite a bit of time to slice depending on your computer specs. So when we have a file that we're happy with, this one I'm pretty happy with, you can you can scroll wheel click and it will show you what your slicer is supposed to look like I'll touch on this again whenever we bring it into the slicer so you can see but when you click down on your mouse wheel it'll show you the slicer view and that's super important because some people think that the slicer is going to show you what your preview looks like in Hue Forge but if that was the case then you wouldn't really need Hue Forge to begin with so up here we have our layer height that's 0.08 and we have our base layer that's 0.16 um, that's going to be important to remember it'll show you in your describe text whenever you save your project all of this information that you see here you can hit describe it'll save to a notes file exit out of here let's go ahead and we will go over to bamboo studio so the first things you need to know are in your quality remember that base layer and your layer heights these are the two settings that you'll be changing to speed things up you can actually in hue forge bring up your base layer to like a 0 0.2 0 0.24 um, and that'll make the first you know a little bit thicker that way you're not spending so much time filling in an entire layer of black or whatever your base color is so in here in your strength settings you'll want to bring down your wall loops to one top surface pattern to monotonic top shell layers at nine I actually think yeah this is a monotonic line not just monotonic your top shell layers to nine um, you'll want to bring your bottom shell layers to nine 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 basically just copy all of these settings that you see on the screen and then over here in your speed you can see that I've changed up the speed just a little bit to speed things up and slow a few things down. Um, no supports, obviously. No raft. Um, you can add a brim. Some of your open air printers, like your A1 series, um, your Mark IVs, etc., those sometimes need brims if you're having warping issues. And if you're having warping issues, another thing could be that you're printing a little too fast. You can slow that down and that can help with that you don't need a prime tower um, and yeah so let's go ahead and bring in that file so when we're in hue forge you'll see this checkerboard if it's a png um, that's your just that's your transparent background that won't actually transfer over you can see here that it is showing in the background but once we slice this file okay so when you slice your first hue forge You'll see, at least in Bamboo, Orca, and I'm pretty sure Prusa Slicer, over here on the right-hand side, this is where you're actually going to drag down this slider. And in your describe text, this is what it'll look like. <coughs> Excuse me. And it'll show you like at layer 12, at layer 16, at layer 17. So when you scroll down to like layer 12 here, it'll say, you know, what layer height it is, which is 1.04. You can check that here and it'll show you 1.04 now if something's wrong here typically what happens is your initial layer height is off it's like set to 0.2 instead of 0.16 or maybe your layer heights off um, so be sure to check that 
but then you will right click on that layer and you can do change filament. Now, if you don't have an AMS, uh, you will need to, whenever you right click, it'll actually give you an insert pause um, option here. And then you will have to, you know, pause the model at each layer height. So that way you can swap out the colors. So this is what it looks like in your slicer. Like I said, if you're in Hue Forge and you click on your mouse wheel, this is the preview, your slicer preview. So we can actually bring this over and see it. You can see they're pretty close, pretty spot on. So that way you can just make sure that everything looks correct before you start printing it. Once you're done, you're good to send it to the printer. Now, a tip that I have is if you have a Hue Forge that is like, I don't know, let's say eight colors and you only have one AMS, if you load all four colors of your first four colors, you go to hit print, this screen comes up, it'll ask you, let's just go ahead and add them. So what I mean by that is we've got yellow, red, black, and white in here. So if we know, if we look over here on the right hand side, we know purple's coming up after the white, we can set that as black and then we can set the magenta as whatever color we want. So in this case, red. And once you hit print and it starts downloading that file and you starts printing, you're going to pull the fourth color. So you'll pull white out of the AMS. Now what that is accomplishing is whenever you pull that white color, once it's done printing the first three colors, so in this case, black, red, and yellow, when it gets to white, the printer's going to notify you on your phone and it'll say, hey, there's no filament here. And that gives you the chance to go and pull out your black and your red, load in purple and black and then magenta and the red slot. And then you'll load white and then you'll hit play. And that way you can get multiple colors and get more than four colors out of your AMS. Now, if you're trying to get more quality out of your images, this one is not exactly, um, it doesn't have a lot of shades in it. It's pretty flat. There is some shading in it, but there's, it's not, you know, it's not like a realistic photo or anything like that. If you had a realistic photo, you can bring down your layer heights to 0.04. That's going to mess up the mesh a little bit. See, it doesn't really change anything. Um, You'll get a little bit more detail, well, a lot more detail if you have a more photorealistic image or if you have a lot of blending. So when you do that in the slicer, when you bring it down to a 0.04 layer height, it's going to double the time of your print. So you really need to pick and choose when you go that low. A lot of people swear by doing 0.04s all the time. Me personally, for my images that I typically do, a 0.08 is perfectly fine. There's no there's no real reason to go down to 0.04. You're not really getting any, any benefit. Like you can see, just, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. All it's going to do is double the print time for me. So it just wouldn't make sense. So another thing that I want to talk about with model geometry, and this will be the last thing that I touch on when you have your max depth, um, your max depth, that's describing the highest point in your mesh. It's not necessarily describing how thick this mesh is going to be. So if you just want to add thickness to your prints, go ahead and bump up your min depth a millimeter or two, however thick you want it, and then do the same amount for your max depth. Most of my projects are done in static depth, um, just because I don't like having this slider control my topmost point. I'd rather just set it and forget it at the thickest point. Um, but yeah. Oh, another thing. So let's go back to prepare. So you see how the these lines are in the background. If we go and we clone this and then we stack them like this, it's showing that an object is laid over the boundary plate, which I guess it technically was. Um, but it's talking about the, the black outer edge. It's not necessarily the prints not off the edge and we know that, but the slicer doesn't know that. So the way to fix that is let's delete this one. We'll do a cut at 0.01 and that that will give us just the hue forge 
Currently, that's the only workaround that we have for this. Um, in the future, Hue Forge is going to be updated to get rid of that box, to get rid of the transparent backgrounds with PNGs. But this way, you know, you're able to fit as many Hue Forges as you want, and you're not limited by the um, the transparent boxes of PNGs, because that has been something that gets asked about a lot, especially with the stuff that I do. A lot of people want to fit as many of these magnets onto a plate at one time. So I think that's everything that I want to cover this week. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments.